Hey, this is Mr. Aiden from MrAiden.com, and this is going to be the 2021 AP Calculus AB exam, free response question number two. So let's get to this question. This is a calculator problem, and so the first thing you want to do, you can see this is a, a, a motion type problem dealing with velocities and accelerations and positions and all kinds of stuff. And you can see we have a particle P, and this particle P is given this function of uh, V of P, or v, VP of T. So the velocity of particle P with respect to time. And so it's sine times time to the 1.5 power. And we're only doing this from 0 to pi. We know at time equals 0, the particle P's position is x is equal to 5. So the first thing I did in my calculator was I defined. I, uh, I defined these functions. So I defined f of x as your v of P, or v of v of particle p with respect to time, and I call this sine of x to the 1.5 power. And so this is what I define for f of x. Then I defined g of x in my calculator. Uh, I always like to define these functions as g of x and f of x. It just works out a little bit easier in my calculator. Um, I don't have any problems, but the g of x is equal to the um, v of particle q with respect to time, and that is x minus 1.8 times 1.25 to the x power. And again, that's going from 0 to pi. But at time is equal to 0, particle q is at a different position. And I want to find the positions at time equals 1. So if I want to find the position, position of particle p, I need to start with this 5, where particle p started plus the integral from 0 to 1, because it starts at 0, it goes to time is equal to 1, of f of x dx. Of course, you could put z integral from 0 to 1 of vp of t dt. And you could have done that. Uh, this worked out in my calculator as 5.37066. And now, if I want to find the position of particle q, Particle Q starts at a different position, starts at 10. And we're going from 0 to 1, but I call this G of x dx. And of course, you can call it um, V of t for something else and for particle Q. And it's 8.56435. If I was just finding the displacement, all I would need is these integrals right here. But because I'm finding the position, I take the displacement plus the initial position, and that always gives me wh what position my particles are at. If I wanted to find just the distance, I would do the absolute value, and so that is the three types of motion type problems to find either position, distance, or, of course, displacement. Now we move to part B, which is, are the particles P and Q moving towards each other or away from each other? And I have to explain our reasoning. So remember, I had my, uh, I want to find V of P at 1, okay, which is my F of 1 in my calculator. I just put F of 1, and I got positive 0.84147. That means the velocity particle P is moving in the positive direction. And then I can find V of Q, the velocity of Q at 1. And which is my g of 1, and I get negative 1. So the particle q is moving in the negative direction. Now let's, let's think of where these particles are at. So what do we know? We know at time is equal to 1. What do we know about particle p? Particle p is at a position, a position of positive 5.37066. We've found out from part a and it's moving in the positive direction, okay? Now, particle Q, particle Q is at a different position, okay? Particle Q is at a position at 1. It's at a position of positive 8.56435. It's further down the line, and it is moving, what did I find? Ne in the negative direction because it has a negative velocity. What can we conclude between these two things is that my two particles are moving towards each other. Boom shakalaka. 
Okay. Now let's go to part C. Part C is now finding the acceleration. So we found the integral, which was the position or the displacement. We found uh, what's happening in the velocities. Now we're going to do the acceleration, which the acceleration is, of course, going to be the derivative. So we want to find the acceleration of particle Q at time is equal to 1. So what do we have to do? We have to do the derivative with respect to time of v of q, remember we're doing particle q, of t, or you could do d of dx of my f of x, sorry, not f of x, g of x, because I define the q as g of x. So I gotta make sure I do that correctly in my calculator. And I end up getting positive 1.02. 856, okay? And so that is the acceleration. Now, they ask, is the speed increasing or decreasing? Okay, is the speed increasing or decreasing? Well, what do we know? Remember the velocity, the velocity of particle Q at 1 was negative 1. So you can see these signs are not the same, which means the speed is decreasing. The speed is decreasing. So speed is increasing if the acceleration and velocity signs are going to be the same. Speed is decreasing because the acceleration at, at 1 is a positive value and the velocity at 1 is a negative value. And so that is your reasoning. Okay, That is explaining your reasoning using quantitative means. And now last but not least, we want to find the total distance, the total distance of particle P. And so when we find distance, we want to, uh, we want to take the integral. So when we find distance, we want to take the integral from 0 to pi of the absolute value of V of P with respect to time. Or 0 to pi of the integral of f of x dx, because that particle p was my f, and so I end up getting 1.931483. There's no sign on this because this is just distance. It's a scalar quantity. We don't care about direction in terms of distance. And that was question number two for the 2021 AP Calculus exam. Hope that helped. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks, guys.